results around, so it's time to get into some epic use of ghosts. It's gonna be cool. Let's do it. Hello, everybody. I'm Parar, and today we're gonna be talking about the third silver problem on the last week's contest: clock tree. Let's get into it. All right. So Farmer John's new barn has a truly strange design. It contains n rooms. Okay, very strange. Conveniently numbered one to n, and n minus one quarters. Each corridor connects a pair of rooms, and blah, 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 blah. Okay, so basically it's a tree. Okay, just full disclaimer right here, I'm not exactly live solving it, because I did have to present it to my CS Club thing, but I did solve it by myself originally, so I will just walk you through my thought process when I was attacking the problem. Okay, anyway, so, the room, every room in the barn has a circular clock on the wall, with standard integers 1 through 12 on its face. However, these clocks only have one hand, which always points directly to one of the integers. Okay. And basically, she wants to synchronize it to point at the integer 12. She is somewhat simple-minded, so every time she enters the room, she increases the clock by one position. Okay. And basically, our goal is to determine wh how many rooms she could start from, so that she could make all of them point to 12. Okay. So basically, the test case that they give is pretty bad, honestly, because it's only four barns, and you can't really get anything out of it. Uh. Bro, I'm dying. Yeah, as I was saying, you can barely get anything out of like four farms, it's hard to see the pattern. So I'm just gonna make up my own tree real quick, let's do it. Alright, so basically, if you have n minus 1 edges and n barns, basically they have to make a tree, which basically means those cycles and they're all connected. Okay, so I'm just gonna make a random tree and hopefully it looks cool. Okay, cool. So now we have a fancy tree and let's start assigning some random numbers to them. What's the number between 1 and 12? 69? Okay. What? 69 not between 1 and 12? God dang it. God dang. Okay, we're gonna go with 7. 7 works. 7 is between 6 and 9. Okay, so now we've numbered it. So this is basically what each clock points to in each room. So basically, we want to find for every room that it works. Where every room that Bessie could start from so that she could set all of them to 12. Now there's two ways to approach this. Either you could like solve it all together and get the number without having to like go through each room. Or you could fix a room, see if it works, and then add one to a total if it works, and not add anything if it doesn't work, right? However, we're given that n is less than or equal to 2,500. So basically that means that you can do it in n squared time. Now, I really don't think that solving all of it in one go will work very nicely, because usually, first off, this is silver, so it's probably not going to be just one fell swoop, solve everything. Second off, if it's n squared, it makes sense, right? Because then you fix one of the rooms that you start from, right? So there's n ways to do that. And then if you could check whether the room works at n time, then you're Gucci. Because then you get an n squared algorithm, and then you're Gucci game 21. Okay, so basically, the first strategy I decided to try is to fix which one we start from. So let's say I want to start from this 8 over here. Okay, Bessie is this big fat red dot, because that's how cows look to me. Okay, and basically what you want to do is you want to figure out whether or not you could switch all of them to 12. Now, honestly, look at look at the look at the leaves on this graph. So basically, leaves are ones that have only degree 1. So like this is a leaf because it only has one edge going into it. 7 is a leaf, 8 is a leaf, this is a leaf, 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 leaf. And no, that's not a leaf. That's a leaf, leaf. Okay. I'm using my bio skills to determine which one are leaves, but yeah, this is basically all the leaves over here and over here, whoops, I didn't. Okay, those are the leaves. And basically, the only way to change a leaves number, what is the only way to change a leaves number? The only way to do it is you have to go from your 8 over here, you have to go all the way to here, and then the only way to change the leaf is to go down into the leaf, but that only changes it once. So if you want to change it twice, you have to go back up because that's the only edge you could get to it from, and then go back down again. So if you want to change this 10 to a 12, we have to go to the 8, then go down and back up again once, that changes it to 11, and then down and back up again another time, and then it gets to 12. So let's say we do that, right? We are starting from eight, this over here, we go here, this becomes a 5, then we go down here, this becomes a 9. And now, basically, what we want to do is we want to make this 10 to a 12. So we go down once, it becomes an 11. We go back up once, this becomes a 10. We go down again, this becomes a 12, and then we go back up again, this becomes a 11. And now we're done with this. This is a 12, we don't have to care about it anymore. We literally just erase it. And remember that w this one became 11 after we like went back and forth a bunch. Okay, but now the 11 is now a leaf. And we know how to handle leaves, right? The only way to do it is to go to its parent and then go back and forth as many times as you want. So basically the strategy is we gotta get all the leaves destructed and then we're done. So then let's try to get rid of this 11 leaf. We just have to 
So right now we're at 11 because we just finished off the 12 and we came back to 11. So the only way to change this 11 upward is to go back to here, this is on the 6. And then from the 6, we have to go back to the 11 one more time to make it a 12 and then go back up. And then this is on the 7. Hooray, now we can erase this because it's a 12 and we're done with it. And then you just keep repeating that until you're left with only two nodes, which is eventually basically going to be leaving you with these two nodes. All of these are going to get deleted into leaves and then we're left with 8 and 4. Well, they're going to be different numbers because we would have done some processing and everything. But basically, you're going to end up at this node over here because you killed all the leaves on that node. And then it'll have some number here. And the only way that you could like change these numbers is to go back and forth between these. And you could try going back and forth, and if that makes the both of them into 12, then you're done. It works. If it's impossible to make these last two ones into 12, then it doesn't work. Okay, so let's do it on the smaller example so that we could prove that it actually works on the sample test case. So, basically the sample test case is like this. 1, 2, 3, 4. And then this one has 11, this one has 11, this one has 11, and this one has 10. So let's start with the 1. Okay, now the only way to change this leaf over here is we go here. This becomes 11, then we go down here, this becomes a 12, then we go back up, and this becomes a 12. Okay, the only way to change the other leaf now, the only leaf that's remaining is this 3, so we have to go down and back up. So this becomes 12, and this becomes 1. And then we get rid of this, we get rid of this. So the only thing that's left is one and vertices 1 and 2, but is there a way to make both of them 12 now? No, because they're literally 2 apart. So no matter what we do, we can't make them both 12. So that doesn't work. Let's say we start from the 2. Then we have 3 leaves. So to make this, make 1 into 12, we go there and back. This becomes 12. We're done with this. We don't need this anymore. This becomes 11. Then we go here and back. This becomes 12. This becomes 12. This is done. We don't need to care about this. And then 12 and 11. And we're at 2. So in order to make this into a 12, we literally just go from here to here, we end here, this becomes 12, and we're Gucci Gang 21, we are good! So that is 1 on our tally. And basically, if we start from 3 or 4, it would be the same logic as 1, why it doesn't work, so our answer is just a 1. Very cool. Let us code this nonsense up. So I know like my thought process was not like super clear, but like basically what I did is I was just like, okay, so we fixed something, now what happens if I'm Bessie? How do I want to make all of them into 12? And then... I noticed that the only way you can make the leaves into 12 is to like do what I did right here. So basically the problem solving strat is you just gotta try random stuff until like the actual thing hits you. I know that it's really frustrating when it's just that one realization and I know this happens a lot but like you just can't think of it during the contest. It happens to me too. Really annoying. But unfortunately there's like very little ways to avoid it other than just trying every single possible thing you could think of. Okay so basically I added our f in and f outs. I added int n added our vector, uh, array to store the times, and then our adjacency list. Okay, so let's read everything in and we should be Gucci. And then for int i equals 0, i less than n minus 1, i plus plus, ah! And then we gotta do int x, y, c, and x, y. And basically what I like to do is I like to shift it down so that it's indexed at 0. Alright, so now that we've read everything in, we want to go through all the n nodes that we could start have as a starting point and then check if they work. And basically the way we're going to implement this is using DFS, right? Wait, let's see if I can get back my old graph, because that was such a pretty graph, not going to lie. I made it up all by myself. Alright, that's as far as it goes back, but basically we're going to DFS, right? So it's going to go here, and then we know that this one had to increase by 1, so then we increase it by 1, and then we had to increase this by 1, and then this has to increase by 5 to get to 12, so we increase this by 5 and this by 5 and then we go back up. Okay, so we're going to make a void or int DFS. And basically what the DFS is going to return is how much we need to increase the leaf in order to make it into 12. And we'll have to pass in the current node and then we have to pass in the parent as well so we don't DFS backwards. So basically for all the ones that are adjacent to the current one, if they're not equal to our parent so that we don't go backwards, then we're going to DFS on that. And we're going to change our current one. Luckily we should have something to keep track of our current number right wait but how do we like have a separate thing to keep track of all the numbers for each dfs okay so we'll just keep have another one that is our 
BFFT. And basically, this will keep track of the time that we're like changing everything, right? Because we're like adding stuff to the time to make sure they're all become 12. But we don't want to edit the original time because every time we go through the DFS, we want to reset to the original time. So we want DFST of current to be plus equals DFS i comma current because if we move on to i, right? The current node is going to be the parent of the one we go to next. Or no, plus 12 minus. Or actually, should it just return how much it needs to I'll rather do that. And then, that should be fine. And once we're done with all its children, then we have to go back up to its parent. And when we go back up to its parent, the DFST of the parent is going to change. So we got to do plus one. And then we got to return our current DFST. And that should work. And basically, like, we don't have to end at the original node, right? So it should be okay if the original node becomes 1 at the very end because instead of going back to the original node once our final leaf becomes 12, we can just stay at the final leaf. So it's okay if it equals 1. So we're going to DFS on the DFS i comma negative 1 and then if DFS t or DFS i is equal equal to 1 or DFS i is equal equal to 12, then we're fine. So we'll have it in total and then we'll add to the total. Oh yeah, and also we have to make sure we mod it by 12 every few minutes. Or no, mod 13? How are we gonna do this? We'll subtract one and mod 12 and then add one, okay. This is make sure that it's between one and 12 at all times and that should be Gucci. And we also have to make sure that DFST is always starts with the stuff in T first. So before we run the DFS, we'll put it back to what it was originally. Okay, oh, can't use I twice. Alrighty, let's test it out. So we'll make a new thing, clock tree dot in, and we will put this over here. And let's F out our total. And why did we see in? Let's just F in originally. Okay, zero. How dare it? How dare it not work? Let us do some epic C out debugging. So we're gonna C out after each thing. We're gonna C out current, and then we're gonna C out current, and then we're gonna out its DFST or DFST whoops uh, end up okay let's check so originally we're starting from 1 okay so basically it returns 11 and it returns 11 so it adds 2 to our 1 so it goes down it goes up wait a minute oh we also had a when you go down to something you gotta DFST that or when you go down to something you have to add 1 to its DFS right Okay. Now that's better. Okay. Now we're working. Okay. Let's test it. Alright. Go here. We go here. We go here. We go here. Alright. The moment of truth. Let's oh, very nice. First try. Let's go. Very epic gameplay. What? No. Why the time? Wait a minute. Is that square too long? Hold up. Hold up. Why is n squared too long? Oh, let's see if we could optimize this boy. Oh, let's see. Let's just check. Let's just check whether n squared is okay with it. Because then it might be a problem with our DFS. So we'll just make this into f out the answer, which is 1. And then let's see. Well, this is a valid strategy, right? Like, if you want to test whether the time works out, just print out the first one so that it allows you to go through the timing ones. And then check whether it timed out still, even after you comment out the part that you want to check. Okay. Okay, so t squared, so n squared is okay. So our, the problem is with our DFS. So let us undo that. Okay, so the problem is here. So let's take out this, maybe that's a problem? No, wait. CS has nothing to do with it, right? Well, I mean, can it go backwards? No, it can't go backwards because we did the parent. It should work. Okay, let's try it. I feel like the C out was a problem, but like that could also be trolling me. Let's okay, good. There, that's how. Okay, so it just didn't like my C out. God dang it. Okay, don't leave C outs in your actual submissions. That is the lesson here. But that was pretty epic. I actually like that problem. That problem was kind of cool. I realize that it is like a really weird realization that it's kind of hard to come by, but once you come by it, it's really epic, really cool problem. And hope you guys enjoyed that. Thank you guys for watching so much. As always, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe for more. If you guys have any other suggestions on what musical uh, problems I should do, just let me know. It's going to be epic. Thank you guys for watching again, and see you guys next time.